Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the optimal selling price. We're going to explain what it is and why we calculate the optimal selling price. And here we're going to go through the formula in showing you how to calculate the optimal selling price. So we're going to go through various common questions in calculating the optimal selling price or the price which will maximize profit. So in using the equation, it is an equation that examines the relationship between price and demand. It shows how the demand changes as a result of a change in price. And what we have to bear in mind is this. The assumption is that the relationship between price and demand is linear. Okay, that is the assumption that is made when you're dealing with the optimal selling price. And you'll see what I mean by this in the graph that is to follow. So the optimal selling price is the selling price at which profit is maximized and that is why we calculate the optimal selling price we want to see what price should we charge that will maximize our profit it's not as simple as increasing your price the way you want and saying the more i increase my price the more my profit is going to be we know that does not work in reality with every increase in price it is expected that your demand will fall so here is the relationship between price and demand and this is what we meant by a linear relationship. There is a straight line relationship between price and demand. As you can see from this example, if we are charging the highest price we can, 30 Rand, and you can see from the line here, that means that the demand is zero. But if we now charge 25 Rand, you can see that the demand is 20. And if we go along and charge 20 Rand, you can see that the demand moves to 40. And we can continue going along the line. But what you can see here is that with a 5 Rand change in price, the demand changes by a constant amount. It changes by 20 units. So for every 5 Rand change in the price, the demand will change by 20. And this is judging from this example. And this is the assumption that we made that the relationship between price and demand is linear. And this is the application that you'll need to bear in mind and to use when you're dealing with the optimal selling price and when you're doing your calculations. So what is the formula for the optimal selling price? How do we go about calculating it? Well, here it is. The optimal selling price, which is represented here by P, equals to A minus B times Q. And what do these letters mean? Well, here is the P, as I said, the P stands for the optimal selling price and the A stands for the selling price when the demand is zero. So A will give you the selling price that will make your demand zero. As we saw with the previous graph, if you increase your price to 30 Rand, then your demand is zero. That would be your A, meaning the highest selling price that you can charge. And B here, stands for a change in price divided by a change in demand. So if they give you a scenario and they say it has been established or it has been determined that if your price increases by one rand, then your quantity will decrease by 10 units. That means that your B is going to be your one divided by 10. Okay, so it's the change in price divided by the change in demand. And your Q here, is your quantity okay and that is the quantity that you're dealing with so let's go through some examples in applying this formula and in calculating the optimal selling price here's the first example we are told that pamgo produces malva pudding each unit of malva pudding has a selling price of 150 rand at a level of 12,000 units for every 10 rand that the selling price is increased demand drops by 1,000 units if maximum profit can be achieved when the demand in sales is 9,000 units, calculate the selling price at that level. So here we are given information. We are told that each unit of this product, Malva Pudding, has a selling price of 150 Rand at a level of 12,000 units. So what are we saying here? If you're charging 150 Rand, you can expect to sell 12,000 units. But if you are to change your price by 10 Rand, so for every 10 Rand that the selling price is increased, demand drops by 1,000 units, okay? So if we increase our price by 10 Rand, our demand will fall by 1,000 units. If we equally decrease our price by 10 Rand, we would expect our demand to increase by 1,000 units. So it tells us here, if maximum profit can be achieved when the demand in sales is 9,000 units, we have to calculate what the selling price is at that 
level so this is a fairly easy one to do so let's begin well, the first thing that we do here is to bring up the formula this is the formula that we looked at earlier the optimal selling price is the p here and it equals to a which is the selling price at which demand is zero and then we minus that by b which is the change in price divided by the change in demand and in our case here the change in price is 10 rand divided by the change in demand of 1000 units and then we multiply this by the quantity now we work with the information that we're given here to get our answer remember when the selling price at the level of 9000 units or when the selling price that we will charge that will cause us to sell 9000 units and it's been determined obviously it says here if maximum profit can be achieved when the demand in sales is 9000 units we have to calculate what the selling price is at that level okay and here is a tip for you if you can see here that it sells 12000 units by charging 150 rand and it tells us that the maximum profit can be achieved on the demand in sales is 9,000 units. That means the units will have reduced from 12,000 units to 9,000 units. So what would you expect? You'd expect your optimal selling price to be higher than 150 rand. Think about it. If you charge an amount higher than 150 rand, you'd expect your units to drop. So that is a tip that you need to know. And it will help you also when you're doing your calculation. If you get an answer which is lower than 150 rand, you know you are incorrect because it's moving from 12,000 to 9,000, dropping in units, meaning increasing in price. So it expected to be greater than 150 rand. So let's use the information as I mentioned. Our P here is the optimal selling price, but we're going to put the price at which the Malva pudding is currently selling. It's selling at 150 rand. So we're going to put the P as 150 rand and then equals to A, which is the selling price at which demand is zero. We don't have that one as yet. And then we minus the B. And as I said earlier on, the B is the 10 rand divided by 1000 units because the 10 rand is the change in price and the change in units is 1000. So 10 divided by 1000. And then the Q here is the one that relates to the price of 150 rand that we put here as P. So if the selling price is 150 rand, the Q is going to be 12,000 units as we are given. And here is how it will look. The P is 150 Rand, and then our unit is going to be 12,000. And like I said, the change in price is 10 Rand divided by the change in quantity of 1,000 units. Now we need to calculate or to solve for A. So here's what we're going to do. 150 Rand equals to A minus 120. And how did we get 120? We took the 10 divided by 1000 and multiplied that by 12,000 units and gave us 120. So that means our A equals to 150 Rand plus 120 Rand. And it gives us what our A is and it's going to be 270 Rand. I hope it made sense. First thing that we had to do is to solve or to get our A. Okay, and you always have to start there. Get what your A is and then work forward from there now we have not gotten our answer yet remember we want the p we want the selling price that will result in the demand of 9000 units as we're told 9000 units means we achieve our maximum profit so we want the selling price at that level but a here the 270 rent means that if we charge 270 we will sell zero units that is the price at which demand is zero and like i said we would expect it to be more than 150 rand okay and that is our a alternatively another way you could have applied the formula to get your a is by taking the p which is the 150 rand and then plus the b which is 10 divided by 1000 times the q which is 12000 units and you should get the exact same answer of 270 rand okay whichever one works for you and i usually use this one here and it gives you the same answer as 270 rand but now that we have our a which is 270 rand and we have our b which is the 10 divided by 1000 now our q is not going to be 12000 units but it's going to be 9000 units and we will be able to get our selling price at the level of 9000 units so let's Go ahead and do that our a as we have just calculated is 270 rand and then we deduct our 10 rand divided by our 1000 units and we multiply that by 9000 units don't forget that is the unit so once you have gotten your a you apply the units that will result in the maximum profit and it gives us an answer of 180 rand 
Now, what does this mean? It means if we charge 180 Rand, we'll be able to sell 9,000 units. And that is what we're asked to do in this example. We're calculating the selling price that will result in the demand of 9,000 units. So if we charge 180 Rand, we'll be able to sell 9,000 units. And it's where we will be able to achieve our maximum profit as we were told. I hope it's made sense here. I hope you now know how to apply the formula to calculate the optimal selling price when you are given a scenario just as this. And like I said, your optimal selling price has to be higher than the 150 Rand because our units dropped to 9,000 units. Another way to think about this logic here is if you charging 150 Rand and you're able to sell 12,000 units, if you increase that price by 10 Rand, you'll only be able to sell 11,000 units because your demand will drop by 1,000 units. So if you increase it by 10 Rand, it's going to be 160 Rand and your units demanded is going to be 11,000. If you increase it by another 10 Rand, it's going to be 170 Rand and your units demanded is going to be 10,000. And then if you increase it by further 10 Rand, it's going to be 180 Rand and your units demanded is going to be 9,000. Can you see the logic behind that and how we're able to get the 180 Rand at the level of 9,000 units demanded. That is how the formula works. Now let's look at another comprehensive example in applying this formula. And this time we're going to calculate the optimal selling price and the maximum profit achieved. And here's our second example. We are told here that the current demand for Ego Limited's products is 3,000 units. The selling price is 20 Rand per unit. The variable cost is 5 Rand and the fixed cost is 10,000 Rand. It has been established that a 2 Rand reduction in the selling price will increase the units demanded by 200. So here we have a bit more information that we are given. But what is the requirement? We are asked to calculate the selling price that will maximize profit and the maximum profit. So what are we asked to do here? We are calculating the selling price that will maximize profit. In other words, the optimal selling price. And we're also calculating the maximum profit that will be made as a result. So we are doing two things here. Calculating the selling price that will maximize profit and calculating the maximum profit. So let's look at all the information and apply them using the formula that we have. And we'll see the extension to that formula just now. So let's bring up our formula once more. You can see here that the optimal selling price represented by P equals to A, which is the selling price at which demand is zero minus b which is the change in price divided by the change in units and what is our change in price divided by the change in units well what you can do here if you'd like to get more understanding and to gauge your understanding of the examples that we are doing just now you can pause the video attempt this question on your own and then you can continue with the video and try and see if you get the same answer that we do so you can go ahead and do that Okay, I hope that you have done that. And as I was saying, P is the optimal selling price. A is the selling price at which the demand is zero. We're not given that. And you'll usually have to calculate A. B here is the change in price divided by the change in demand. The change in price here, and I hope you attempted the question and you got the same answer as ours. It's easy. It's the two rand because it says here that it has been established that a two rand reduction in the selling price will increase the units demanded by 200. So, the B is 2 Rand, which is the change in price, divided by 200 units, which is the change in quantity. And obviously here in brackets, we have the quantity. So how are we going to do this one here? Well, the easiest one to compute here is the B. And like we said, it's the 2 Rand divided by the 200 units. And it gives us an answer of 0 0.01. So that is our B. The next thing that we're going to do is to compute our A, okay? So you could have started like we did in our previous question where we just went ahead and computed the A first. But here I just wanted to do the easier one so that we can have the decimal. So it's easy for us to work with that. So let's compute our A. And this time I'm going to use the second formula that I displayed just to show you the variation. And you will use whichever one you'll be comfortable with. But uh, it's exactly the same formula. So A equals to the optimal selling price plus the change in price divided by the change in quantity which is 0 0.01 as we have just calculated and we multiply that by the quantity so let's use the information that we are given we are told that the selling price currently is 20 rand per unit so we're going to put the p as that 20 rand like we did in the previous example and then plus 
0.01, which is our B, as you have seen how we calculated it, and then we we'll multiply that by the quantity. Now the question is, what is the quantity when the selling price is 20 rand? Well, we are told that the current demand for the company's products is 3,000 units, and the selling price is 20 rand. So since we have put the P as 20 rand, we know that the demand for the products based on the price is 3,000 units. So the Q is going to be 3,000 units. So our A is going to be 20 rand plus the 0 0.01, which is our B, and we multiply that by the current demand, which is 3,000 units. And we will have our price when demand is zero. Again, our price, even before you went into the calculation, you should have known that it will be higher than 20 rand because at 20 rand, we are able to sell 3,000 units or we have a demand of 3,000 units. So if we increase the price, our demand will fall and we want it to fall to a point where it's zero. And that is our A. So obviously our A here is 50 rand. That means if we charge 50 rand, we'll not be able to sell any units. We'll have a demand of zero. And now that we have our A and we have our B, let's see how it looks in the formula. But you can see here, we don't have our Q as yet. Now we still have to continue working through the formulas that we will have and try and figure out what our Q is or our quantity demanded is. So here's our formula looks thus far. Our P equals to or the optimal price equals to 50 Rand, which is our A that we have just calculated, minus the B, which is the change in price divided by the change in demand 0 0.01 and multiply that by Q or the quantity demanded. Now, we don't have the quantity demanded, so we need to compute that as well. Now, we didn't do that in the previous example, so here is a bit more advanced, but you can still be able to get the hang of it. Now, again, if you know this or you don't know this, we know one thing, that profit is maximized when marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. Okay, so you need to know that because that is what we're going to use to compute our quantity or to get our quantity in order for us to get the selling price that will maximize profit. So profit is maximized when marginal revenue and what is marginal revenue here? What do we mean by marginal? We mean the revenue that is made by producing one more product. And what is our marginal cost? It's the cost that we incur by producing one more product. Okay. So when our marginal revenue is equal to our marginal cost, we know that profit will be maximized at that point. And why is that the case? Well, because we want to produce, we want to keep producing for as long as our marginal revenue is greater than our marginal cost, we can keep producing and we know that we'll make a profit. But when we reach that point where our marginal revenue equals our marginal cost, we know we've produced the most we can produce without going into losses or without incurring a loss or without letting our marginal revenue become less than our marginal cost. Okay, I hope that has made sense thus far. So you need to know another formula here for the marginal revenue. How do we calculate our marginal revenue? Well, that one is easy as well. You just need to pay attention here. Our marginal revenue equals to A, which is the selling price at which demand is zero, minus 2B times Q. Okay, you can see this formula is exactly like the formula for the optimal selling price. The only difference here is that you have added the two there, as you can see. So it's going to be A minus two times B. That's what we mean by that. And then you multiply it by Q or the quantity demanded. So we already have our A, we have our B, but we don't have our Q. So let's see how our formula looks with what we already have. Our A is the 50 rand. Remember, we had already calculated that. And then we minus that by 2, which is the formula for the marginal revenue. And then you multiply the 2 by the B, which is the 0 0.01. And then we finally multiply it by Q or the quantity demanded. Again, we don't have the quantity demanded. So by doing that, we have 2 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.02. So our formula should look like this. Marginal revenue equals to 50 Rand minus 0 0.02 Q or 0 0.02 times Q. Okay, so that's how it looks thus far. But also, what do we know? We know that profit is maximized when marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost. Okay, and that is what we have 
the our marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost that means our profit will be maximized so we know that our marginal revenue is in this formula that we have but the q is unknown so we need to solve for that but what is our marginal cost or in other words what is that extra cost we'll be incurring by producing one more unit well there is the variable cost remember the fixed cost like the word fixed says it stays the same regardless of the number of units we produced obviously that is within a relevant range okay so our variable cost is five rand that we are given here so already you know your marginal cost is five rand because if you produce one more unit we know that we'll incur the variable cost so that is our marginal cost okay so we know that our marginal revenue equals to our marginal cost in other words our marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost of five rand so what we're going to do here is to substitute our marginal revenue with the variable cost or with the marginal cost of five rand and here's how our formula now looks five rand equals to 50 rand minus 0 0.02 times q I hope you're not getting confused the reason i substituted my marginal revenue with the marginal cost is because our marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost meaning at that point we have made the highest level of profit okay so you always switch your marginal revenue with your variable cost or your marginal cost and then you'll be able to solve for your quantity or the quantity that you need to sell for you to make the highest level or for you to maximize your profit okay so we already have a lot of things on our screen so let me just clear most of these things and bring back what we have there so so far we had ended there we have five rand which is our variable cost or our marginal cost equals to 50 rand minus 0 0.02 times q so what we have on our left or in red the five rand there is our marginal cost and here on the right is our marginal revenue okay so we just switched our marginal revenue for our marginal cost so what are we going to do here well if you move the 50 rand to the left then we know that it becomes a negative so it's going to be negative 45 rand because positive 5 rand minus 50 rand gives us minus 45 rand equals to minus 0.02 cube so obviously the negatives both on the left and on the right they cancel each other out so for us to compute for q or the quantity demanded we just take the 45 rand divided by 0 0.02 and it's going to give us our q so 45 rand divided by 0 0.02 equals to the quantity that we need to sell for us to maximize our profit and the answer is 2250 units that is the amount of units we need to sell for us to maximize our profit now we have the quantity that we need to sell for us to maximize the profit but what will the price be if we're going to sell 2250 units what does the price need to be well remember we are the one who are setting the price so we need to set a price that will make the demand 2250 so again let's bring up our formula our optimal selling price equals to the 50 rand which is the a remember we had calculated it earlier 50 rand minus 0 0.01 times q very important here we don't use the 0 0.02 because the 0 0.02 was when we were calculating the marginal revenue okay we go back to our original b which is a change in price divided by the change in demand which gives you 0 0.01 and our q here what is our q well now we have our q remember earlier we didn't have it that's why we had to use the marginal revenue formula so our q is 2250 so when we insert that into our formula it's 50 rand minus 0 0.01 times 2250 and what is our optimal selling price or our p well our p is 27 rand 50 cents what does this mean if we set our price at 27 rand 50 cents we will be able to sell 2250 units okay and that is how you use the formula to get your optimal selling price when you have issues like your variable cost and your fixed cost but we are not done as yet we're told to calculate the selling price that will maximize profit we've already done that which is the 27 rand 50 cents that's the selling price that will maximize profit but we also have to calculate the maximum profit we will make well it's very easy once you have your selling price that will maximize profit it's very easy to get your maximum profit and here's how it will look our sales is going to be the 27 rand 50 which you have just calculated 
times the 2250 units which we also calculated and it gives us an answer of 61,875 rand okay that's the amount of sales or the value of the sales that you will have made and then our variable cost is the five rand times the number of units we sold which is the 2250 units and it gives us 11,250 rand and obviously our contribution is 61,875 minus 11,250 and it gives us an amount of 50,625 rand now we have just computed our contribution now we need to take into account our fixed cost so our fixed cost equals to 10,000 rand we're given that information and then we take our contribution of 50,625 rand minus the 10,000 rand fixed cost and it gives us an amount of 40,625 rand what does this mean well if we set our price at 2750 we'll be able to sell 2250 units and by doing so we'll be able to make a profit of 40,625 rand now you can try any other selling price which will determine the quantity that is demanded and try and compute the same one you will not be able to get a profit higher than 40,625 rand then that is why we compute our optimal selling price the selling price that will give us or that will yield the highest level of profit and what do i mean by any well if you try and reduce remember your selling price is currently at 20 rand so if you try and reduce it by 2 rand you know that you'll be able to sell 3200 units because remember for every change in price by 2 rand then our units demanded will change by 200 okay so if we increase our price by 2 rand our units demanded will drop by 200 if we decrease our price by 2 rand our units demanded will increase by 200 so you can try any other one you will not be able to get a higher profit than what we have gotten here and that is how useful the optimal selling price is I hope it has made sense. I hope you've gained value from this lesson. And if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those who think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.